I've gotten some requests to do more in-depth coverage of some of the MPC paid plugins. So we're doing that today with MPC Fabric. Now, full disclosure, Akai did send me this for review after I talked a bit of smack about them. But I will always say this, you do not need the MPC plugins. Uh, I will show you what you hopefully need to know in order to wield Fabric and what you need to know about what it can and cannot do. But I would only recommend actually paying for any of the paid plugins if they fit something that you already wanted. With that being said, let's go in for a painfully deep dive into MPC Fabric. All right, I'm going to start this off by giving a super quick overview and then we'll get way into the weeds. So Fabric is essentially somewhere between a sample player and a synthesizer. You have three layers to work with. That's layer one. Layer two, these operate exactly the same. And then a third layer, which is a one-shot percussion layer. Now, as far as I can tell, these layers basically play multi-sampled instruments. You've got a bunch of stuff to choose from, from like synth oscillators to pianos, all that kind of stuff. It is a walled garden though, so you can only pick from the selection of like multi-sampled layers that you are given. If you want to turn your own samples into synths. I did a dedicated video on how to do that. You can do it with the MPC with no paid plugins, and I'll link that at the end of this video. From there, you can shape those samples in a myriad of ways and then layer on a pretty crazy amount of effects. That's the short version. Now let's get into the details. I'm going to start this actually by pulling up an initialized patch. And right off the bat, let me mention something weird. And I might be the only person on Earth who has encountered this, but I did encounter it. So just in case you also do, let me mention this. If I turn off full level here, so the uh, pads are now velocity sensitive. You hear that warble? But on full level, it doesn't happen. If I go all the way to the end here, to MIDI settings. Notice that aftertouch has its destination sent to pitch and that depth is turned up. I'm going to go ahead and turn that down to zero. And now you can hear that the warble is gone. That's in the initialized patch. It like insisted on adding that and it sounds, especially on like a piano sample, really weird. So if you have that problem, that's how you deal with it. I was bashing my head against the wall trying to figure that out. So now here's our initialized patch with no warble. Let me turn this back to full level for now. By default, it goes to one of the oscillators. Let me go to oscillator two, which by default is also set to the same thing. So first of all, let's select a different sound. So let me go to oscillators. So you've got your big picture banks that have a bunch of the major categories like acoustic pianos, electric pianos, different synth categories. I'm going to go to acoustic pianos and it'll immediately load in one of the acoustic piano options. And then if I click on this, I can choose uh, which of the acoustic pianos I want. So let's go grand one soft in this case. Like I mentioned, this is a multi-sampled instrument. So if I play it more softly, it actually responds realistically. That's why it takes so long to load in. And that's why I think they don't let you load in your own samples because they want to have full control over, you know, loading in a full multi-sampled instrument and have it be all nice and have it, you know, mapped nicely across the keyboard and all that kind of stuff. I personally would, of course, prefer if you could load in your own sample, but that's why key group programs exist. This one's very meant to be kind of a guided walled garden. So regardless, that's how you load in from their selection of sounds. You can layer those. And you've got things like volume sliders. And you can also uh, modulate these with the Q links, but be careful. These top two Q links will control the layer bank and which layer is selected. Like it'll cycle through these, for instance, which I'm guessing you probably don't want to do if you're going for a Q link, you probably want to say, turn the pan, which is all the way up here and uh, a little bit finicky. 
so the cue link can come in clutch there, or the volume. So when you're in this main window and you have this selected as your cue link thing, I would be careful touching these two knobs because they could like wreak havoc on your patch or just use the big value knob. Regardless, we've got our layers. Maybe we've mixed them together. You've also got some macros. So these will control major points of your filter, like your filter cutoff, resonance, attack and release. And you can control the formant and sample start of your sample and turn the delay and reverb on or off or control the mix. That's nice to have. That's just a very quick view to make some adjustments to presets or make some adjustments to your patch just on the fly at a glance. If I go to our next tab of this here, you've got your percussion. So let me turn these off. And once again, you have a limited list to choose from. Interestingly, you can choose whether the trigger is note on, like it is now, or note off. Check this out. You could probably get creative with that. I'm not entirely sure exactly when you'd want to use that, but I'm sure it could be interesting. You can control the octave that that little stab is at, as well as the cutoff, decay, release, and volume. So if you want it to be real short and stabby, or to cut off very abruptly, you've got the options to do so, and then of course control the volume relative to your two main layers. And on this third one, we've got the ability to transpose the entire patch. Or you can tune it more minutely if for some reason you want to do that. And control uh, your pitch bend. This is also where you choose uh, your polyphony. So you can either have it be dynamically polyphonic. And I believe based on processor usage, it selects just how many voices are allowed to play at once. Or of course there's legato. Retrigger. Which is like your classic mono. And then you can control how many notes are allowed to play at once for a more limited polyphony if you want to. There's also glide, glide time, and then the main volume of your entire patch. So as you can probably tell, these are kind of global settings going on in this first window. Now let's go into a layer and let me actually turn off this uh, piano sound for now. So we've just got that saw. These two layers are exactly the same. So I'm just going to go through one of these layers. In here, you have a lot of shaping you can do for this initial sound. First of all, I should mention that at the top here, you once again have the ability to turn it off and on and you have the ability to select what sound you're using and control its volume and pan from here. That's just stuck to the top no matter which thing you select. And as you can probably see, you can either select these tabs at the top to cherry pick the option that you want, or you can hit this and it will cycle through them round robin style. A couple things I want to draw your attention to in the way that you can control um, the pitch of your entire patch all at once. You can also do that on a layer by layer basis. So the octave, semitones and sense. So let me turn this back on real quick so you can hear or semitones or by sense if you want a bit of subtle detuning. Interestingly enough, you can also control the sample start. So let's do this on layer two. The delay which is how long that takes to kick in. If I have these layered. And you can also make that really subtle for some kind of flam effects, or you can control the format, which is like the tonality. Make it either darker or brighter and harsher. For acoustic instruments, you probably want to be careful with that, but it can add some nice stylization. And I like that that option is there. Moving on, let's actually turn my saw back on and go back to layer one for our amp. And you will notice if I just real quick mess with this envelope, layer two is unaffected. The uh, envelopes are completely independent for each layer. So keep that in mind. If you're trying to change envelope stuff and wondering why it's not having an effect, 
that might be why. So you've got your classic attack, decay, sustain, and release. And let me turn down my sustain to demonstrate this. You also have fade, which is this little F right here. You can hear how it dipped down and then kicked back in. I'm going to leave that off for now. This is also where you select how much your volume is controlled by velocity. So let me turn off full level. So I should mention for the initialized patch, by default, velocity sensitivity is turned on here in the amp. And it's also turned on in the filter with this velocity knob, but we'll get back to that in a second. But volume is not the only thing that can be affected by velocity. Your attack value can also be affected by velocity. So check this out. I actually really like this. So if I turn my attack up, so it's slew. If I turn this up, if I play it softly, the attack takes a while. If I play it hard, the attack is a lot shorter. And by the way, the exact same applies for the filter envelope, which is neat. And uh, you can also do the inverse. So like a hard hit will be slow, whereas a soft hit will be fast. The fine control you get with this is admittedly pretty good. You can also control the spike. So if you want to have a really harsh, defined, stabby beginning. That's how you're going to get that, as well as controlling the spike length. You also have pan key tracking. And if I turn it this way, lower notes are going to be further left and higher notes are going to be further right and vice versa if you turn it uh, the other way. This is probably going to be more useful for like a piano sample or something like that. You also have pan alternate, which can give your patches some width. So if you're playing like an ARP part, or maybe some big chords that can add some nice width. And uh, once again, that's a nice thing to have in here. That's under the amp section as well. We move on to filter. The envelope stuff is exactly the same as the amp envelope, down to the addition of fade, having stuff controlled by velocity and being able to control the attack with velocity if you so choose. So let me turn down my filter and turn up my envelope depth. And now you can hear that uh, this velocity is having an effect. And also my filter envelope is doing its filter envelope-y thing. You also of course have resonance And I'm going to turn up the envelope depth a bit further. Once again, if you engage the uh, filter and then shape the envelope a bit and then wonder why it doesn't sound like it's having an effect, let me just show you that. You're like, why isn't it working? That's because your envelope depth is probably not turned up. And that resonance is a bit high. And you've got a few filters to choose from, including uh, turning it off entirely. And here's an odd thing. We have two separate velocity knobs. So let me uh, turn this up and turn this to zero. So you can hear this having an effect. Let me turn this off. Now the filter is barely affected by velocity at all. But if I say turn down my cutoff, turn this velocity up, and then turn my envelope depth up. Now everything is working in tandem. So you've got two separate ways to control the filter opening and closing based off of velocity, depending on how much you want it to be in lockstep with the filter envelope. Regardless. Let me turn this to no filter for now and let's move on to pitch. So if you want to hear effects, you got to turn on envelope depth and that goes up to an octave. And let me just turn this up. So now it's going to follow the shape. It's going to go up an octave and then back down. 
Or maybe it starts up an octave and then goes down as well. And you're just going to shape this based on what you want. And so hopefully this is pretty visually laid out. So if you want to make some percussive stuff, you might turn level three to zero and then move this in sooner. And you can like modulate this with the Q link knobs. In this case, personally, I would just do it with the touch screen or at least mostly do it with the touch screen because it's a lot more intuitive. And it is worth mentioning that you can have this whole thing be reversed if you reverse your envelope depth. And finally, LFO. You can change your sync and set the destination. So let me re-engage the filter. Let me turn on my sustain so that the filter envelope's not doing much so you can just hear the LFO in its natural habitat. The big thing is that if you want to hear it do anything, you got to turn up your depth. And you can choose what it syncs to. So does it sync to the first note and then just go by hertz? Disconnected from the tempo of your project. It could be each note. So it'll reset. You can do BPM and note. So this will be synced to the tempo of your project. But then it'll reset when you hit notes or BPM and beat. So it will be independent of which note you hit as long as you're like holding them down legato. For example, you can also choose fade. Let me actually demonstrate this with pitch and then turn up my rate. So on its own, that sounds very silly. Let me turn the depth down a little bit. So we've got some vibrato going, but maybe we don't want it to kick in right away. So we turn up our fade. So now it'll come in over time. So you can get some really neat effects by using an LFO with some fade enabled or just extra expression. So those are your layers. There's quite a bit that you can do. Remember, you can do it independently for each layer. So this piano is unaffected by that vibrato, for instance. But let me go ahead and just put together like a really basic bass patch. So let me swap this out. Let me find a decent synth bass. Woo! The Hans Zimmer. <laughs> And let's get to shaping this stuff. So let's go to our filter. Let's bring this down. Let's bring the decay up to like a couple of seconds. Let me turn this off real quick. Let me turn off my LFO depth. I don't want it engaged in this case. Turn down our cutoff. I'm just shaping this by ear, you see. And in this case, I want this to be set to retrigger. Let's go back to filter actually and turn that decay down a little bit. Release up. I'm going to do something different with layer two because we can. So I'm going to leave my amp pretty much the same. But then I'm going to set this to be a, let's say a band pass. And I'm gonna have this come in. Turn up my envelope. So that becomes more and more apparent. Not the best patch ever made, but hopefully you get the idea. Hopefully you see where I'm headed with this. Mainly what I wanted is to have something to demonstrate the um, various effects on. 
So we've got a lot of them. And that's probably one of the reasons that this takes up so much processing power is that they basically took a bunch of their effects plugins and just pfft, crammed them all into one plugin. So, among other things, a chorus, a tremolo. Once again, we have to turn up the depth. This can be great for adding some shimmer to a higher pitch patch. And you'll note this is different than the voice spreading thing where it like alternates um, on a note by note basis because this is rate based. Regardless of the notes that you're playing. And you can send this to a mod wheel, which is fun. I should also mention while I'm here, even though the controls for these effects are partitioned out across these different tabs, you can turn them on and off all in one view, no matter which one of these tabs you're in. Up next, though, let me turn that off and turn on our phaser. Turn up our mix for that. That can get quite harsh and will definitely cause phase issues, so use with caution. We've got flavor. And this is where you're going to get a few things. You're going to get different speaker simulations. So like here's a bass amp. And note that everything goes through this. Gramophone, headphones, megaphone, radio transistor, a lot of stuff to kind of degrade it in what's hopefully a pleasing way or just make it sound a little bigger. You can also control the depth of that. So let me do a nice obvious one like a gramophone. You can control how much of that there is. It's basically a mix knob. Plus your vinyl sim that will include distortion and be careful uh, which cue link you hit. Once again, this is going to control this little dude right here. So distortion. Flutter. You do it on a higher one. And that's going to sound like the LFO pitch movement because that's basically what it is, but it makes it sound more oldie timey. This sounds great on like a lo-fi piano. And then if I go down to here, noise and uh, monofi, which will collapse this whole thing down to mono. That's flavor. You've also got just a really basic EQ. Just to really dial in the tone of your sound if you want it. You will notice this already had its own little amps in here in flavor. We also have a dedicated amp cab sim. So right now it's on DI, so you're not going to hear anything. And I should mention, if you ever want to like get a full list, you can click this and scroll through the list. I am not much of an amp head, not really a guitarist, so my knowledge on this is uh, limited. I apologize. But you can get some pretty nasty stuff out of this, which is quite fun, plus your tone settings and whether it's stereo. Basic compressor, remember that if you really want to hear it do stuff, you do have to turn up the ratio, probably. I do wish that there was like a more visual interface for this, but hey, use your ears. And up next, we've got our delay and reverb. So I'm going to turn up the mix for this. And you control the feedback. Turn up the time. And you can control your left right ratio, which is fun. That feedback's probably too much. Stop that. And you can also filter your delay, which is always nice to have. It can keep it from getting muddy, shape the tone of it, make it a little vibier. And reverb. Like any MPC reverb, this will probably take some work to get to sound nice. Turn up the mix. Yeah, MPC reverbs, man. 
they just don't always sound great. <laughs> I found that turning up the time and the size goes a long way. And turning down the brightness. But man, in large quantities, that's just kind of rough. Turn up some dampening. And hey, that's fairly usable. Maybe turn on a little bit of delay. Go to a nice bass. And that's pretty usable. Finally, you've got your MIDI settings. So if you're using something like a foot switch, this is probably more meant for the MPC keys players, but you do have access to controlling various parameters. And a little full circle, let's bring an aftertouch. So with everything I've showed you so far, let's turn some of these effects back on like a little bit of distortion let's turn on a chorus and maybe like an absolute tiny bit of phaser and now fairly basic patch but it's fairly dynamic and interesting and of course if you spend more time with this bring in other kinds of layers, you can take this a lot farther. If you'd like to see a more musical take on this, where I make a lot of music with the paid MPC plugins, you can check out this video up over here. And if you'd like to see how to turn samples into synths without paid plugins on the MPC, you can check this video down over here. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll be back with a new video in a little bit.